Alrighty, welcome back everybody for episode 3 of Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm going to pause the sound on that for just a wee minute. Um, sorry, I just had a lot of difficulty there. I just went to stream it myself and it didn't work. Not quite sure why. Um, but it seems that I may have worked those problems out and it appears to be working and live now. Which means we can actually get on with it. Something to do with the full screen on it. So my bad still working out a lot of the kinks on this but um the sound quality should be a lot better and yeah hopefully you guys should be able to see me better too hi jazz hands okay so again why is that not working please work okay okay so last time i did this I'm not appealing to any of the three characters directly. I'm not making any of the choices or decision making to appeal to one of the characters directly, which is, I believe is what you're actually supposed to do. Um, instead, whenever it comes to making the poems, I'm going to literally pull off, like pick rainbow, um, because again, it's something that I know comes up in the Bible. Um, God made a rainbow, which is a promise not to flood the world ever again. So I'm looking for something within all of it that has a biblical meaning to me that makes some sense and allows me to do this and uh, like passion crimson waterfall breathe childhood sparkle parfait embrace sing death and puppy sing doki doki holiday entropy fickle swimsuit fluffy suicide whirlwind awesome friends god is awesome so Okie dokie. A warm journey, cute, giggle, comfort. God is my comfort. Blanket, meager, vivid, boop. What is a boop? Lipstick, hope, pain, beauty, silly, and bouncy. Folks, welcome back to the stream. Sorry about that previous problem. Hopefully everything should be working just fine for you now. And the the screen should actually be changing. I'm going to double check that now. Just because, yeah. Yeah, it's working. Okay, I don't know why it wasn't working the first time around. It might have had something to do with the full screen on it. So, my apologies, everybody. Back to business here. Back to business. Back to business. All right. Um, so, I'm going to go with beauty on this one. And whenever, again, God is infinite. So, I'm going for infinite. Um, together, climax, cage, hop, uh, hop, insight, skipping, eternity. I'll be with God for eternity, so I'll take eternity. Um, the the good thing is though, is each time you do go to do the poem, it does seem to change the words that come up. They're not always the same. Um, although similar same words will repeat themselves, but not in the same sequence or in the same page each time. So. Promise, pleasure, pink bed, secretive whistle, variant, sweet, sunny, color. Nope, I'm stuck on this one. Uh, oh, promise, easy, promise. Music, sunset, kitty, cheer, massacre. Okay, parte, uh, extreme, captive, anime, and ambient. Um, God created music. Seem, again, most of my choices seem to appeal to the bow-haired girl. Don't know why. And stream chat might not be working for me, folks. Again, it might be because I went on and off the stream about five, six times. So apologies if I don't see something come up. Because it's just saying connecting for some reason. Oh, well. Um, okay. Play miserably, misery. Charm and capable. Nightgown, summer, cry, extraordinary. God is extraordinary. So I'll take that one. Heaven sent, I'll take that one. Anxiety, laugh, philosophy, d destiny, disaster, bunny, games, horror, jump. It's great, I just got a, <laughs> got a notification that my wife is following me on Twitch. <sighs> Such a lucky guy. Um, philosophy. A tone, strawberry, aura, email, nibble, vanilla, defeat, prayer. We'll go for prayer. So... Interesting that that was a bow-haired girl. Right. Disown Inferno, Calm, Vibrant, Peace. Mm, between peace. I'm not struggling between peace and forgive. I'll go with 
forgive. Uh, head bonus vivacious. Clouds bliss frightening adventure. Want to go for adventure. Imagination, happiness, fester, lust, grief, daydream, intellectual, sticky, ocean, agonizing. Oceans, because it's a worship song and it's awesome. Um, hey, any plans to play other games? Yep, lots. Um, at the minute, I'm just going to do the let's... Sorry, that's a message from Ben 6 VTR. Why Fortnite? Why Fortnite? Why Fortnite? Why make me do this? Um, it's whether or not my computer can run it. That's the thing. I can run Fortnite, but actually like playing it and streaming it at the same time. Maybe not. I, um, I'm going to do this Let's Play series. And then once I'm done with the Let's Play series, then I'll probably be on to other things as well. For example, For Honor, I can actually stream and it's great. I love that game. Um, unrequited fun, loud, melancholy, spinning, memories, whisper, peaceful, scars, and valentines. Go for peaceful. And rose skirt, vertical, clumsy, explode, fireworks, feather, covet, starscape, and unending. God is unending. And unstable, fireflies, lazy, lucky, essence, sensation, despise, love, graveyard, and uncanny. Go for love. Bowhead girl. Yeah, no, it would be. So like I said, we'll go through this here and we're going to find out what the whole crack is with this whole Doki Doki Literature Club thing. Because it is supposed to it is supposed to get a bit darker or make a random turn, which is apparently what's attributing it to being associated with suicide. <laughs> I will, I, I, I promise, I swear I will play Fortnite at some point. I will play Fortnite. I do have it on my computer. I've played it like three times ever. <laughs> but um so i'll see i'll see but i don't think i can stream it i might be able to record it but i don't think i can stream it so you'll have to check out youtube and maybe i'll throw up some fortnite clips but sure youtube's coming down with fortnite clips okay character has gotten a little more comfortable in this classroom i have already just gone through this scene because i messed up the stream itself so i've actually seen all of this scene so geo sayori yep you're in a good mood you have no money in your purse though and you're gonna invite me to go with you to go somewhere to do stuff. And it's not cool. It's not cool, Sayori. You're kind of hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay, empty out your purse, please, my dear. Which is not something you would ever ask a woman. And fellas, I recommend that you do not, do not ask a woman to see inside their purse. And why do they always take off their shoes? Telling you. Don't understand that. No reason. Okay, just wanted to look at it. I literally batter my space bar playing this game. Then she turns it upside down and lets its content spill into dust. Only two small coins fall out. It doesn't really tell me how much she actually has in her purse at all. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. Aha. Uh -huh. <sighs> Game is still making me feel very cringy about it, but because I mentioned this in the last stream, I'm kind of getting double over myself. Um, Sayori's character has no money, um, often wakes up late, is always hungry, and again, these may be characteristics of a mental disorder of some kind, or at least depression, that not that unwillingness to get out of bed, stuff like that there. Yuri, which means light of God, from my earlier stream, Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was listening, and her face is in her book as always. I wasn't listening or anything, it was just something in my book. It tells you to let me borrow some money, let's don't let me involve. Get me involved. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. If anybody plays Eve online, only fly what you can afford to lose. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Well, that's a little bit harsh, to be honest. Yeah, Yuri, shh. Shh, Yuri, not cool. You got to absorb in your book. I know, Yuri. Shh. Also, don't shush women. They don't like that. Or don't shush anybody. They don't like that. Don't shush me. I don't like that. Uh, I really like when you speak your mind. But it doesn't happen much, but it's such a fun side of you. Okay. There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad. Now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. Like that. Still coming from you. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us. Yes, there is. Burn up a fire. Holy fire. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club even before she told me. 
bringing me back to another point here, actually. Um, I've deliberately not watched anything to do with this game, so I don't know where it's going. And that I did purposely. So if this game suddenly gets very dark all of a sudden, then I apologize if anybody is in a bad disposition. Just remember, despite all appearances, this is a very adult game. And uh, being the fact that the warning is that, you know, it can, has disturbing content. So you wouldn't come here if it weren't for the cupcakes. Cupcakes, we love them cupcakes. Put your shoes back on, girl. Yep. <laughs> Caught me off guard last time as well. Pwah. Out of nowhere, something smacks you over in the face and tumbles onto the desk. It was a cookie. Here, have a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siri glances around. Is this a miracle? Mana from heaven. Cookies slapped to the face. It's because I played my restitution. Restribution. Actually, that one almost worked. I was just going to give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes, and it was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. See, does anybody else notice that this girl has, like, you know, like, one one fang? One fang here? Like, she'll be a bit of a vampire on the go? Don't trust that girl. I do not trust that girl. In fact, I don't trust any of you all, okay? I don't trust any of you all. All three of you. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. So, hugs a cookie. Just eat it. And her character is a little bit larger than life, which is obviously supposed to be Sayori's character, but... Mm. Suddenly clasped her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. You're going through a lot to just get one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Huh, yours looks really good. Can I try it? Beggars can't be choosers. Yours is chocolate. Give you that one. Yes. Thanks. Wraps her arms around her because it just does not need to be in there. Jeez, ah, I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um. So he suddenly leaves down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Yep, she did just seriously do that, and then she trots away. Yuri and I laugh. I hate the fact that you don't get to choose really what your character's doing or saying in any of this kind of and any of the interactions really. It's much more of a a rail kind of game. It's moving me in directions and the only thing it really seems to ask me is like one choice to support one character's decision once per episode and then the poetry as well which is just randomly picking out words where's monica we have no idea where monica is she's late nobody has no idea where she is i hope she's okay of course she's okay she probably just has something to do today she's pretty popular so she probably has a boyfriend is what everybody thinks yep Suddenly the door swings open. Uh, this is where, at least now, now I'm into territory that I haven't seen. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Because you can't just be sorry, you have to be super sorry. Uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. We like assuming things. These girls like assuming things. You're so strong-willed. What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What the hell, jump anyway? Well, my last period today was a study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. Aha! That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Mm, terrible excuses, these. Pia, pia, piano, pia, boo, piano. I wasn't aware you played music as well. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. So Monica has a secret. I've always wanted to learn piano. And her poetry says that she has a secret as well. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. So that's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. Okay. I'd also look forward to it. Yep. I won't let you down, Gio. Oh. Okay. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that there. Uh-huh. Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. Boom. Go for it, girl. I see. In that case, best of luck. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Nope. Not really. Just everybody... Slapping each other with cookies, it seems. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow finished her entire cookie. What size was the cookie, man? I mean, it's somehow. I was like fit eating a cookie. Yuri's back at her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Yep. Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm going to get some supplies from another classroom. Want to come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica. Kind of wish they would just mm, speed this sort of stuff up. So I need to get some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Brilliant. Sure, I'll go with you. 
Okay, Monica will be back soon. Where are you going with you to get the supplies? You don't need to chop it yourself. He'll be happy to go with him. Okay, so now it's probably uh, now it's probably going to give me an option of who I want to go with. It's just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper. No. Okay. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind Sayori, hums and skips down the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm talking to the kid. To the, I'm taking a kid to the mall. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Okay, so we'll spill the beans. We're going to do a poetry performance. A performance of what kind? Well, everyone is going to take turns on stage and recite their favourite poems. Ha, that sounds kind of dull. It does a bit, in all fairness. Don't know if anybody else would enjoy that, but you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading the poems, it's about performing them. When you say the lines of the poem, like, hold on, I'm getting character here. Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem. Freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? Hold on a minute. So we're talking about killing and killing the flower here. For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Okay. That was surprisingly rather deep. <laughs> Sorry, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. My character is mean. My character is mean. I'm sorry. It's true. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just meant it's pretty unordin unordinary contrast to your cute self. Calling a girl cute, yeah. Uh -huh, don't say it like that. It's embarrassing. Uh -huh. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job of what? Being cute? No, Rainbow Six. You can't have my viewers. Yes, I guess so. So Festival is going to be so much fun. Sarah spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Gio, the classroom over here is empty. The mission. It's been a long time since I spent time with Sarah like this. Excuse me, last episode we spent time with Sarah buttoning up her blazer um, so she could talk about her boobs. So, yeah, awkward. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. So nothing but a ball of sunshine, joy, and happy vibes from the world around her. Hmm. As years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more, so going adventure with Sayori brings a special sort of feeling I got ahead of me. Hello, Mookie. Hello, Nero. My cats. Cats, 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 cats. <laughs> Sorry, I love my cats. So going adventure with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Yeah, not the awkward moments. Two of us enter the classroom, so we head straight up to the closet, and I follow us. Let's see what we have in here. And crayons, sorry, pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf of the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sorry, starts pulling out various crayons. Well, I knew I'm sorry. That's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find a way. I'm looking for my favorite color. All right, then at least move aside so I can look at the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Sorry, bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor, and crayons spill all over her lap. This is again turning into. My forehead. Sorry, clutches her forehead. That's just like you, innit? In it. Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. What? You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Uh, yeah. Saw that one coming. Gently brush her bangs to the side. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Stop touching the women. Right? Stop touching the women. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. Well, obviously. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Um, <laughs> Jimothy Gaming, I'd rather be playing Fortnite myself. But there's an investigation to be done here. And like I said, although this game looks quite cutesy... Mm, is not. Even when someone's playing Sayori plays a silly joke. I kind of wish that we could just get to that point though, but obviously the game itself has to kind of draw you in in such a way. But he said, if, if people if this game, honestly right, let's, get, let's get serious for just one wee second, right? This game, and everything that it's doing with the cutesy characters and the cutesy playful music and stuff like that there if this game is actually causing people to 
either self-harm, think about self-harming, or actually go as far as committing suicide, I need to know the ins and outs of this game. And I, 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 I need to know everything there is to know about it. And I could watch other people play it, but I think it's best if I play it myself, make my own decisions throughout the game. Um, but more so than just that as well, just have an informed decision about it, you know? need to have an informed decision about this game so I can actually give it a review, a proper review, uh, and see if it really is, actually contr can contribute to people's suicide. Speaking of which, the age 13 agreement at the beginning, this game, mm -mm, if it does go as dark as I've heard it is, then it's, there's no way this is appropriate for 13. I pass you over to the shoulder, run down the hallway. It's a seat. Mm. What should I get? Doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't matter. So just go and get an apple juice. Yes, in a moment. I return to classroom where I left so already. Okie dokie. Uh, the music. Okay, she has one plan. I was using the other hand to clumsily scoop coins back into the box. Okie dokie. Sorry, opens the cap. Start tricking it. Sorry, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, you idiot. Don't call her an idiot, man. How hard did you hit your head? Sorry, this is a bottle against the bumper in her head. It stings, just bear with it. So, I'm imagining that, again, you're supposed to really get involved here with the characters, or at least feel like an attraction to the characters, something like that there, before the game starts messing with you. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, I suppose it would. You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You're kind of oblivious in some ways. Uh-huh. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. Don't we all, dear? You just got to get up and keep going. You start crying really hard. Mm -hmm. And you would rush over as quick as you could. Well, this is lovely. I tried really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid to get in trouble if somebody found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all. But I really did do that. Yeah, don't you remember? Mm -hmm. Maybe I do remember, but I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Mm. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. I don't think you realise it, but you're always thinking about other people. Mm. My character so far is not thinking about other people most of the time. Being the fact that he's calling them an idiot, or asking to look inside their purse. Maybe the character has more insight, but also seems to be very inappropriate as well. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You really are, sweetheart. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Oh, dear me. Guys, wedding bells. Wedding bells. Before I even know what I'm treating you like that, I guess that's what happens whenever you've been friends for so long. Maybe you're right. Dude, you know, I'm so glad that's nothing changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever. If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. True. Don't make promises you can't keep. Well, I hope so. This is it's been this long already. I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. So he has a whimsical expression in her eyes. She remains silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that whenever I see her deep in thought like this Come on, skip to the end. It makes me not want to disturb her. Mm-hmm. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry, Monica. Good luck with that. She's going to see her forehead either way, not if I hide it under my bangs. Okay, yeah, back to the old, the same sprite. Let's move on. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. How long is this sitting at? About 25 minutes? Mm. Plays with her bangs, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. <sighs> okay, we have, so we still need to do the whole poetry shrine and everything. She's fine. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead on the shelf. Well, anyway. We were able to find everything we needed. Yep. So she frantically glances around herself and forgot all the stuff. I'm sorry. I have it all right here. I found the post paper too. If I failed to come up with an excuse for sorry, I made it an adventure. Perfect. Adventures. Everybody loves a good adventure. <sighs> okay. I have to make sure the crayon box is closed tightly because the crayons were clearly the most important he thing here. 
return to my seat. So you don't actually get to see the poem that you write yourself first, right? And Monica is the f wasn't an option last time round. So we'll go Monica this time round. We'll go in reverse order up to Sire. We'll do Sire last. Why? Who knows? I have no idea. Hello again. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Yeah, I really wouldn't count on that knowing me. Seriously. You never know. I want to share with you what you wrote for today. Come on, come on, come on. Take my poem. Tell me what you think. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. Okay, you two are like a Jai Hmm. So, without trying so far, just the words that I picked, which again, I try to keep it all in a biblical kind of context, the words that I would have picked, um, seems to be leaning mostly towards Sayori. So the game and the characters are reacting to that, at least. Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, but I seriously... Yes, you are teasing. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interested people, so don't be afraid to give them a fair share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. Oh yeah, I only get you only get every now and then with her. Right, okay. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Oh no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you. I didn't really mean it like that. No, oh, don't worry, it's fine. Fine. Get what you're saying. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. But anyway, you want me to read my poem now? Oh yeah, okay. I like the way this one turns up, so I hope you do. Alright, let's take a look. So, save me. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless caf cacophony. Another word that I need to look up. Of meaningless noise. The noise that won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sin, cosin, tangent, like playing, playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Okie dokie. Monica has issues, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm not sure if that's that that might be uh, amazing poetry of to somebody, but uh, hmm, hmm, it's even more abstract than your last one. I guess just the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. Nope, never said that. Well. Hmm. I wonder I wonder if my character is actually even honest. Choosing how I wear the space Because to be honest, I would just probably hand that back and be like, yeah, sorry, I don't get it. It's almost like magic. Whatever the lines really short makes me feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Let's see. See, George, George does not understand art at all. So this, they, they honestly, there could be masterpieces of poetry in this, and I'll not know, uh, nor nor will I be able to properly appreciate it. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem could be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Okay. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway. Well, I'm actually, technically, if any of this is true, chime in, but <laughs> Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Ha <laughs> ha, fourth war break. Hey, you never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? Ha <laughs> ha, fourth war break. Ha ha ha. Yep. Okay. So, like I said, I'm going up the list, and Sayori is obviously the one that it appeals to the most. Let's see what you've written for today, Yuri. Go. On. Your skills are really re already improving. Yep. Now, Yuri seems to kiss your butt quite a bit. I'm just happy to inspire fellow writers. I know you need this, so don't worry if it seems you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. I should be a little bit more daring on stream. I don't know. Don't know what else I can do to be there. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain to turn into a bunch of gears. Didn't read that right. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. Come on. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. Oh dear. This is certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. So this is a poem you wrote for today. You're not timidly, timidly hands out a poem. The raccoon. 
It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I give the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. The bread, my hunger, curiosity, the raccoon, an urge, I believe that's his urge, I don't know. The moon incites his face and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. A lot of focus on the knife I'm noticing here. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto a newly satisfied uh, newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cut knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Mm. And I feed myself again. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Okay. Roll up your sleeves, Lori. Roll up. Cool t-shirt? Yes. I know, right? Aston Villa, my man. Aston Villa. One day we'll get back into the Premiership, and one day, probably whenever I'm dead, <laughs> we'll take the cup. Right. So, Yuri, roll up your sleeves, girl, because, yeah, I don't trust you. There's a little more daring with this one than yesterday. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. Mm. It's a bit dark, if you ask me. Well, at least it seems to be pointing towards something dark. But I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid Im imagery and convey emotions through them. This poetry stuff is beyond me. Yeah, if it takes out of face value, I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express it. The way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. So sometimes I enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Geo? Yeah, everybody does. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. Yeah, I suppose we all have. <laughs> yeah, my wife's from Burnley, but uh, so she likes this top on me because it's well, basically a similar sort of top. I have a Burnley top. I have a Burnley top as well. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult, sometimes some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. Okay, well, call yourself weird. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Kidoki. Natsuki, the one who I actually thought was mental. <sighs> hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. Okay, but I can't really say it's any better either. Ah, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. What makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Mm. <laughs> well, then keep practicing. Maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh, something tells me that's a completely missed the point. Uh, this reminds me of Sairi's poem from yesterday. Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her for so long, you guys might be on the same wavelength. That's what I'm afraid of. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden. Okay, well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Nice. Well, at least this girl insults my back, you know, because my character is quite clearly a jerk in how he speaks, so it's nice to have a character be a jerk back. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably be just fly away like letting go of a balloon. Ha 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 ha. You could say that we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, I guess we're supposed to. Yeah, get your poem. Come on. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg real bad. Really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. Hello, Pengu. 
Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has the hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Hmm. So, in the last episode, Natsuki and Yuri had this... Uh, I don't know what the best way is to say it. A disagreement of such. Of which basically they were calling each other out on things. So whatever it is. There seems to be a problem between pink haired Natsuki here. And purple haired Yuri. Quite a bit longer. Yesterday's was way too short. It was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No of course not. Anyway the message is pretty straightforward in this program. That I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues. With much simpler analogies. And it helps people realise how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Of course, it's what everyone thinks my... It doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. I really hope I don't have all these characters wrong. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. It's something you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares about some, what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone that makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Like people who genuinely like games like this. The dating sims and anime games and stuff. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Hmm. Did you say Yuri? Yep. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. But people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well... I mean, yours is pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Well, there's anything wrong with that, in your own words. Hypocrite. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words because, yeah. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. Right, okay. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. Mm, see? But connecting the dots here, folks. The way you put it, it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so, even if her writing style is very different. I'm sure she'll appreciate the message of poem. This is what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Last but not least, Sayori, the person who the poem is connecting to the most. Sup, Joe? I really love your poems. Can't believe you've been out these for me. She'd give them all. I should give them all really, really silly voices or something, you know. I'm not hiding, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one's too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. The only one who feels that way, not even Natsuki. Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something, but I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Whoops. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. So, because my poems have accidentally leaned closer to Sayori than any other character, then, yeah, okay. So, at least at least there must be some differences then. Um, how am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But somehow make everything in your life an adventure, even the little things. Like cooking. So yes, I can feel more feelings through you than I can feel through myself. Okay, let's get weird. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. I don't know if I understand. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? Head pat. Most patronizing thing on the planet. A head pat. I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, just fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Gio, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Uh, okay, awkward. Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Eh, uh -huh, sorry. Do you even listen in anymore? Well, whatever. Okay. I'll give it to you when we go home. Snap. She broke her pencil. Yes, okay. Hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped, but being inattentive of surround, she bumps right into me. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down to pick up the broken pencil. Sorry, clutches the desk beside her to support herself. Music. Mmm, sit down. Rub Sarah's out. <sighs> Sorry, I forgot about that. See, again, the, the interactions between the characters is bubbling on a concern level for me. Um, okay. What's this? Bottles. 
I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but it's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle. All in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. I'm actually really enjoying this poem. <laughs> night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Creepy. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. And in they come in such a hurry, do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them all from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay, that took a bit of a darker turn. Holy crap. Sir, did you really write this? What? He's <laughs> in like... Okay. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. It's almost kind of creepy. Yeah, it is, actually. Maybe just because I'm used to you being so cheerful. So, it's good that... You the character seems to be able to be straight up and honest with Sayori, less so than the rest of them. The point is that it came out good, so you should be proud of it. I feel like I'm meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. I've gotten pretty passionate. Hope you keep it up. Right. You skip to the end. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a bit of a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it more, no more than a week later. Nope. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, dokey. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems. I have something extra planned today, so if everybody could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Let's do something for the festival. It's not like we can put together anything in just a few days. We just end up embarrassing ourselves and instead of getting new members. It's a concern of mine as well. We don't really do anything with last minute preparation. Don't worry, we're going to keep it simple. We don't need much more than a few decorations. So he's been working on posting and designing some fun books to come out during the events. Okay, that's great. We're going to be performing. Um, Monica, yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. So, yeah, these two might not be cool with that. Uh, but the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite the poems too. Sarah's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Sarah, who's been a colouring poster, holds it up for everybody to see. You kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Did you say that? Did you really think that's about an idea? Uh, what's the problem? What's the problem? Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine that Yuri shakes her head in fear. Uh, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm, I'm sorry. But. I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club, and if we start the event, at least put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. Kind of poking her in the eye. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Start expressing your feels. You didn't look at yourself. Find new horizons and having fun. That's right. Uh, so the reasons that we're all in this club. Yep, 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 yep. Seriously, this game really needs to get to a point for me. Trying to, I'm trying to enjoy it, and as much as I kind of get somewhat of an immersion in it, it's just not my type of game, to be honest. Then I know you can do it. Okay, yep, yep. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Yuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think it's Yuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get a bit of can just help out a bit. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left, but I guess I have to get over it. Mm -hmm. I'll get it over with. Sorry. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? 
Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Uh huh. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. Good night, Yuri. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in the front of each other. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. So, if Yuri and Natsuki have poetry that is like supposed to be clashing with each other, then this is where it's going to kind of blow up. But Monica flips through her notebooks to the specific poem she has in mind for herself, and she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem, podium, little, little, the title of this poem is "The Way That They Fly." Monica begins to recite her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good. Yep, okay. This is also cutesy and all, but... Get on, but... I'll go next. Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Cuts a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called Yuri. Anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why she's suddenly putting in so much effort. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform to the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. Confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and a structure that she... Yeah, okay. This must be a rare glimpse inside the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality, glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards. Oh, I'm such a hero. Such a hero. Give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds a poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I'm next. Go sorry. This one's called My Meadow. Uh -huh. Sorry, giggles. He <laughs> sorry. How do you guys do it so easily? Mm -hmm. Trying to think of it as if to recite to people imagining your recite to yourself like in front of a mirror inside your own head. So he begins her poem. Feels like a soft voice is made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into somebody than I thought I knew and through and through. So he finishes me applaud. I did it! Uh-huh. Even Gio liked it. That's because I'm such a jerk. That's because I'm such a jerk. Came out nicely. Kidoki. Yep. Embarrassing. Pick a poem to the challenge issue more. Who's next? Nasuki. Harumph. Don't make me go for before Geo. Okay. Might as well get. Might as well let Geo lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Jerk. Start to hit that hour point. I'm not gonna have much of a selection. I'll just go with whatever today. I stand up, step before the poem. Everyone has their eyes on me, make me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your ability, it's more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that I'll improve over time. Pardon me. Alright then. Let's just leave you, Natsuki. Yeah, 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 I'm going. Natsuki, the poem is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Mm hmm. Harf. Jump. Natsuki, when she starts to recite the poem, her sour eyes, she disappears a little. While she's a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. She finishes, after an applause, and leaves back to her seat. Easy for you to say, you'd better not make me do that again. Okay, yeah, leave the attitude. In front of people. Yeah, it's just embarrassing. It's a surprise. 
Well, I guess uh, you won't have much to worry about for the past couple of said. I want to thank everybody for coming. It's hard, but I hope that you all have an idea. Was make sure you pick a poem, get enough practice before the festival. I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you're doing. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. I hate that pose. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. You know the festival's coming up, so let's try to write poems. I'm working out really nicely so far, as I can continue. Monday's a big day. Okie dokie. Then I'll have to do my best. <sighs> Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well... Uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Jerry, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Mm. Look how we get to, I mean, sorry fumbles with the words. So let's just say that one day Yuri, Yuri has to walk home with you, huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Okay, so it's big decision time. Right. Well, okay, because I have to make a decision on this. So here's my train of thought. If Yuri, if it, right. So I walk home with this girl every day. We're like childhood friends, okay? And if a different girl asks me to walk home with her, is that necessarily wrong? Could third option would be better that we could all walk together. Um. Anyway, I would like to not. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. See, again, I don't really feel like I've got that much in the way of options. I would still walk home with Sayori. I would walk home with Yuri. Mm. Kind of feels like I should cheat and put a save point here. <laughs> in fact, no, I've run the decision making. I should actually, because I'm going to be coming back and redoing them. To see a lot of the different reactions, so okay, I'd still walk home with Sayori. Okay, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I always see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to like really going home together. I just wouldn't ruin that for you. So you're silly. You think about this too much sometimes. You would deserve it if she wanted. Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Mm. Conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sarah to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Ah, the game is pointing in a random direction. Right. Great. Damn it. I'm going to end up here. So. Shh. So that should stop the... Poem. Right. better mute ah oh, perfect oh, i love the silence okay now that ends this episode which is running up to about 55 minutes which is far too long these episodes are far too long um anyway thank you everybody who's been with me on the stream thank you for anybody who's watching on youtube on this um but i would just like to be able to close this or in prayer um i'm just thinking about it Again, this game doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. It really doesn't. But everything's kind of building very subtly towards something. And, you know, I think that's what's actually... That must be what's getting people. Anyway, uh, episode three, done and dusted. Um, okay, I'm just praying. Um, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you again for this time this blessing thank you for everybody um who's been on the stream with me lord or anybody who's viewing it on youtube as well lord please 
bless them and Lord just I hope I hope they understand what it is that I'm trying to do because playing this game at the minute Lord I still don't really see it but you know better than I do and your thy will be done not thine own but Lord please just be close to anybody who is playing this game be with them Lord and if if this game really is affecting people to the point of depression, suicide, or the self-harm that this game might have in it. Please, Lord, anybody who's just over 13 years old, do not let them play this game, Lord. Please make sure they're like at least 18 or over, an adult or over. And just, Lord, I pray for the, the families that have been affected by this game, and especially those who have lost loved ones, and that this game may be connected. Lord, just, I lift all of this up to you, and I ask it all in the name of Jesus. In his mighty name, we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, that's it for episode three. Um, again, I really do hope this picks up some speed. Um, yeah, adios. I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay.